Hello and welcome everyone. It's our 20th reunion. I'm Amanda Britt and I'm so thrilled to see all of you this evening. Um, it's so hard to believe that it's been 20 years since we walked across that stage. Uh, I don't know if any of you are feeling that, but oh man, it felt also really good to hear Cast Iron Filter again. Um, so welcome and thank you for taking time to join. Uh, we have a great, great lineup tonight, followed by an awesome time to connect. Um, I'll admit it's unusual to see everyone through Zoom this evening. Five years ago, I remember running into many of you in the Alvarez Union on Friday night with a drink or outside with your families eating barbecue on that Saturday and fanning away the 90 degree heat on the Chambers lawn. I remember walking past Chambers at night and feeling that old pit in my stomach like I did when I pulled all-nighters. Thankfully, I've learned to manage my time better and hope you have. Um, so again, welcome. It's really important to hold space for all of those memories that being on campus together represents. And yet now we just get to see each other over Zoom, see each other in our homes. <laughs> so I look forward to seeing whose kids run by, whose dog's nose up to the screen. You might hear my dog. So I know this doesn't feel quite like the connection we'd hoped for at our milestone reunion and hope the COVID veil will lift soon enough for all of us to be together again. Um, but I'm really excited for what we have planned tonight and can't wait to reconnect with all of you in the way that we can tonight and in the year to come, uh, an opportunity we'll announce at the end. So what this past year and a half has, year and a half has shown me, um, and I'm sure many of you, is the importance of friendships and community and real connection, and especially bonds over time. And my Davidson time provided some of that strongest and longest relationships that I hold. And I look forward to celebrating those with you tonight. Um, and the intent of this reunion night is to really connect and have fun. So we want you all to be present and engaged. And we're here for many of our classmates. And until we open up our cocktail party and break out into groups and able to chat, remember this is a large Zoom. So keep your mics on mute unless you're uh, ready to speak in in the cocktail hour and we will cue you for that. Um, before we dive in, I want to thank um, our wonderful reunion committees. In planning our reunion, I've been so honored to work alongside terrific classmates and want to acknowledge first our engagement lead volunteers who worked hard to make tonight possible. Eric Arnold, Scott Buchanan, Shaheen Counts, Emily, Carvin Emily Carmody Khan, John Kenyon, Jen Caldhill Wilhelm, and a special nod to Kirk Willingham for making the throwback playlist that I've been listening to all day and I uh, hope you'll click on the link. And to our class gift lead volunteers, Elizabeth Brantley Boston, Mark and Rebecca Harris Cody, Jenny Gold Hux, and Eleanor Cross Young. So be sure if you haven't made a donation already and want to, they're available to point you in the right direction. But uh, now we are going to move on to the spring frolic event, which we will have our uh, Robert Touchstone introduce and walk us to the, uh, the mocktail. Um, he's going to get the celebration going. And uh, Robert is a contemporary liberal arts junkie of ours based in Charlotte and has designed an especially great experience just for us. Uh, so if, don't worry if you didn't order the spring frolics cocktail in a box. Robert has sent instructions, which Hannah will be posting in the chat box now, or you can bring any cocktail, any mocktail, any drink, water, whatever you like. And uh, Robert, take it over. All right, I'm gonna stand up, is that okay? I, I, I feel like I can't tend bar without standing up. Um, sitting is a, a little weird. So um, good evening and thank you for including me in your 20th class reunion. Uh, my name's Robert Touchstone. I'm coming to you live from Charlotte. And I'm really honored to be here with you um, to share a little bit about me and my passion for craft cocktails. Uh, my journey started um, into the world of bartending and mixology about, oh gosh, 19 years ago, give or take, when I, when I finally turned 21 and could finally get behind a bar. Um, it was my senior year of college, and I was so excited to actually get to make a drink. Um, I love the science of it. I am a science nerd as well as an arts and theater buff. Um, and so I really love how a well-balanced cocktail complements your food, it complements your experience. And of course, it's a fun spectacle to watch. So um, about four, uh, 19 years later, I still get to dabble in this work. Um, since I moved to Charlotte about 15 years ago, I've been able to incorporate mixology and bartending into 
my real job, which I spend my days as a professional fundraiser for a nonprofit here in the Charlotte Mecklenburg region. Um, the main reason I'm doing this is because I really was frustrated with how catering companies um, didn't have the ability to do an elevated cocktail experience for some of my fundraising events. Um, and I really wanted something a little more special for my donors. So I started out designing cocktails um, for my events and the rest is history. Um, now I get to do a little bit more uh, with events like yours. And I feel very fortunate to have a really cool day job where I have the opportunity to show my creativity, um, you know, through beverage. And now let's, let's talk about the spring frolic. Um, it's a drink I had a lot of fun creating, um, primarily with Eric Arnold, with some input from the committee. Um, it really pays homage to your annual uh, spring festival, much like we had at my college. Uh, and it's a refreshing take on a Moscow mule. So are y'all ready to dive in? Okay, I'm going to start with the um, mocktail version. Obviously, you want to get yourself a nice size pint glass. We're going to make a little bit of a mess here because I don't have an ice bin. And you might see my dog come and clean up my ice mess because she loves to uh, chew on ice. All right, for the mocktail, you're just going to add about one and three quarter ounces of the spring frolic cordial, which there are instructions for how to make if you would like. And then top it off with some ginger beer. Super, super simple. And once you add a little garnish. It looks very pretty and festive. <laughs> now, if you want to make it an actual cocktail, all we're going to do is build the same cocktail. And this time I'm going to show you how to do it if you're at home. You're going to pick your alcohol choice. I'm uh, pouring Kettle One tonight. Um, I recommend Maker's Mark or your favorite rum. We have some great ones here in Charlotte. Um, and I also like Kraken. So. <laughs> Anyways, pour in your vodka. Now, this is where it gets a little fun. So if you don't have the spring frolic cordial, take a couple of berries. Um, we use blackberries and raspberries in this uh, recipe. And then you want about three, two to three mint leaves, uh, fresh. These came from my garden. You just want to express the oil from the mint. So you get a nice little clap, drop it in, a little more ice, and then, This helps break up the mint a little bit more. And this is always the fun part of bartending. Sometimes everything gets a little jammed up. <laughs> and then basically you're going to strain into a glass. Nice. And then pour in your ginger beer again. Obviously, I've run out of ginger beer in that can, so I'm going to grab another one. And then voila. Garnish again, and you're ready to enjoy. <laughs> and that's a spring frolic. So I'm going to head it over, hand it over to Eleanor, who I think is going to give you uh, raise, raise your glasses and a cheers. Oh, good. Hey, thanks, Robert. Hey everybody, I'm so excited to see all of you. Um, and I was asked to make a little toast on behalf of our class. So if everybody will grab a glass and join me. A toast to the class of 2001. We may not be together, but the Zoom will still be fun. It's hard to believe that it's been 20 years and I promise we'll find a time to celebrate here. For now, it's so good to see you even in Zoom squares and for those who aren't with us, we'll send up a prayer. But for now, I'll raise a glass of whatever you choose, water, summit coffee, or the spring frolics booze. To this college that brought us together long ago for teaching humane instincts and helping us to grow. To memories of past and those yet to be made, to friendships that last over two decades. So here's to the class of 2001, our years with Davidson have only just begun. Cheers, everyone. And now Elizabeth Brantley is going to give us an update on our class gift. Oh, thank you, Eleanor. How many of you are surprised that Eleanor 
had a poem there for our toast. Um, I, for one, am not, but I'm very impressed because I also happen to know how long ago she wrote that, which was not that long ago. So well done, under pressure, like, like the old days. <laughs> Wait, procrastinating to the last minute. Uh, welcome everybody to our reunion once again. I'm honored to announce the details of our uh, 2001 reunion gift. Um, and I just wanna tell you all how thankful I am to see you and to share in our connection with Davidson. We have all had a tough 18 months in one way or another, obviously many, many more difficult than others for sure. But um, I have been really impressed with the way Davidson has continued to lead and produce graduates with the same humane instincts Eleanor just mentioned and creative minds and shared values that we were fortunate enough to experience when we were there 20 years ago. Um, I don't know how many of y'all follow Davidson online, but when all of this hit, um, I followed a lot of institute, you know, as we all do in news and institutions and things we're affiliated with. And I can't recall anyone jumping to action as quickly and as cogently and as articulately and well-planned, they were prepared. And um, it just makes me proud to give back to this place that impacted us in the way that it did. And um, and after, as I said, this, this difficult year um, to be affiliated with a place with such good leadership. Um, our reunion class gift celebrates what we've done this year in honor of our 20 year uh, reunion. And it will include current gifts and uh, milestone annual gifts that were given over uh, multi years. And this year, 40% of our class has given a total of $104,793 in new gifts and multi year commitments. So, that is what's awesome about that. Two things. One, we hit our goal. The all they don't they didn't tell me to tell you this, but our goal was to, to hundred thousand, and we we already hit it. June thirtieth is the deadline, so we still have time to give more. The percentage goal was sixty percent, and only forty of us have given. So there you go. We still have something to work towards. Uh, we got however many days left, about three weeks left till the end of the month. So if you haven't made a gift and you plan to, please go ahead and do so. I'm sure Eleanor or anybody on the reunion gift committee would be happy to help. Um, these these gifts were uh, support Davidson's priorities, like scholarships, unrestricted support, arts, athletics, um, experiential learning, and diversity and inclusion initiatives. Um, thanks to each of you for your support, and I will now turn it over to Reverend Clark Scalera to honor those classmates that we have lost since our last reunion. Thank you all. All right. Thank you, Elizabeth. As we've uh, gathered across the miles and distances that have separated us, raised our glasses and celebrated the generosity and dedication of our class, we also wanna take a moment to pause and give thanks for the people who have made, who have helped shape our Davidson experience. We remember those who worked and studied alongside us, helping us to develop humane instincts and disciplined and creative minds as we all prepared for meaningful lives of leadership and service. People who shaped us with their time, energy, and love, from professors and coaches to folks who folded our laundry and served us meals at Bale Commons, librarians, chaplains, alumni, and community members. There are so many who deserve our gratitude. There are many people on this call tonight who have impacted our lives as well, and we are grateful for one another. We recognize too that there are many who are not here with us this evening. Some have been kept away by commitment or distance too great to bridge or some grief too heavy to share. Additionally, since our last reunion, we have lost three members of the class of 2001, tragically and far too soon. Their journey with us has concluded. And so we pause now to join together for a moment of silence. In this time, I invite you to remember and give thanks for the lives of these three classmates to acknowledge both the fragility and the gift of life and the impact that these three have made. And so I lift up the names of those classmates we have lost over these five years. Julia Santon, Leanne Petty, Matthew Hurley, Friends, as we remember these three, 
their gifts, their friendship, their kindness, and their inspiration, we make a claim of great hope that their lives continue to have impact and meaning in this world. The Reformed Christian tradition, which birthed Davids in college, claims an additional hope that though their journeys among us have come to an end, they have left a great mark, and now they rest, enfolded into the loving care of an eternal God who created them with intention, love, and purpose, and who now welcomes them home. May it be so. I thank you all for your time and presence honoring these three, and now I'll hand things off to John Kenyon, who has an award presentation honoring one of our classmates. Thank you, Clark. The Kirkendall Award for Community Service, named for Davidson's 15th president, 1984 to 1997, is an award recognizing alumni who have provided extraordinary service to their community, demonstrating leadership through servanthood in the spirit of John W. Kirkendall, class of 1959. Leanne Petty, class of 2001, was the of the spirit the character and the community impact that the John W. Kirkendall Award for Community Service was created to honor. For those who don't know me, my name is John Kenyon. As a classmate and lifelong friend of Leanne, it is my distinct honor, joy, and privilege to present her posthumously with this award. As a student, Leanne was committed to her friends, her studies, and the Honor Council on which she served. She knew nearly everyone else on campus, including most of the faculty and a large percentage of the staff. And she knew them beyond offering a simple hello. She knew about their lives and their families too. Following Davidson, Leanne returned home to Birmingham, Alabama and became a fixture in the community. She worked initially as a paralegal at Regents Bank but her talents were quickly discovered and she served as vice president and volunteer services coordinator. She received the region's Better Life Award in 2014, the top honor given to a region's associate for outstanding dedication and job performance, as well as exemplary involvement and commitment to the community. She was part of the 2018-2019 class of Leadership Alabama and recognized in 2016 in Birmingham Business Journal's Top 40 Under 40. In 2015, the bank tapped Leanne to serve as a loaned executive for the United Way. She said that her time there opened up her understanding of all the needs in the community, the many ways to serve, and an appreciation for all of those who help others find their own value and worth. Outside of work, Leanne served on the board of the Firehouse Shelter and the Cahaba Foundation, the advisory board for the Alabama Governor's School, as roundtable past president for the Public Affairs Research Council of Alabama, on the finance committee for Dawson Memorial Baptist Church, and as Junior League of Birmingham's community vice president. This year, the Junior League of Birmingham held its inaugural 100 acts of service in her honor highlighting the theme, hashtag, live like Leanne. The program aims to inspire area residents' involvement in charitable activities around the community. Recently, a local publication wrote about Leanne's contributions in an article fittingly titled, A Servant's Heart. Reading that article, one cannot help but note how her heart for the person came to light. She woke up every morning and went to bed every night thinking about ways to connect resources and people and loved others the way faith calls us to love. Nominations poured in for Leanne to receive the John W. Kirkendall Award for Community Service on the occasion of her class's 20th reunion. One said, quote, Leanne not only left behind family and friends who cared about her, but she also left behind a philanthropic legacy and a life of service. Even a few weeks prior to her passing, Leanne was ensuring that colleagues at Regions Bank had opportunities to volunteer in their community and that they were able to record their volunteer activities, end quote. Another noted, quote, I can say with confidence that it would be my and my classmates' distinct honor to celebrate Leanne, her brilliant heart and her legacy with such a high honor. Service was Leanne's life. Davidson was Leanne's love and Davidson's highest alumni service honor is distinctly fitting for her.
end quote. A third offered, quote, we say everyone is special, but Leanne really was singular. She was outgoing, popular, always looking out for others or helping others, intensely involved in charity or community service, and never dour about it. Everything she did seemed to be a passion or at least a beloved pastime for her, end quote. One night when Leanne was four years old, her father remembers saying to her after she finished her prayers, God gave you a special heart, and I hope you will never let anything change it. Leanne stayed true to his words and lived her life with her heart wide open. For a life lived so well, but taken too soon, for the outpouring of love and joy she sent into the world, and for the countless lasting ways she left her communities and the people in them better than she found them, the Davidson College Alumni Association posthumously recognizes Leanne Petty, Davidson College Class of 2001, with the John W. Kirkendall Award for Community Service. We have in attendance with us tonight Leanne's parents, David and Carol Petty, and Leanne's sister, Susan Petty Needler, and their families, who are here in her honor. If everyone can unmute themselves and give the petties and needlers a round of applause. Hi. So much, John. Um, that was a beautiful tribute and um, very moving. Um, I know for, for all of us, for me personally, Leanne and I were four year roommate success story and uh, I'm so deeply impacted by her loss and um, truly moved to see her and her family here. Hello, honored in this special way this year. Thank you, John. It was beautiful. Okay, so now we will transition into our opportunity to connect together. So for the next hour, we're going to have an opportunity to mingle in breakout groups. And here's how this is going to work. Everyone will be sent to randomized breakout rooms for starters, and you have two options. First of all, you don't have to do anything except engage in the room once you get there. Hang out, talk with people in the room until we convene back. Hannah will put us in the main room in about 55 minutes. Or you can also float in and out of the break rooms to visit each other. Um, and in case you don't know what floating is, here's what it means. On the lower bar of Zoom, you'll find a breakout room icon. Um, most of the later versions of Zoom are on the right lower side. Press join for the room you want to be in. You'll see the options. And then confirm you want to join. You'll see who's in. And then you'll be in. And uh, you can uh, switch as many rooms as you like or stay in as many as you like. If you don't have the icon, you may need to update your Zoom to its most current version. Hannah will place that link in the chat now. If you need help with that, you'll probably have to log off for about five minutes and jump back in. Don't worry, Hannah will put you in a breakout room. Um, so, um, and again, if you didn't order your special Davidson cocktail, don't worry, just bring something or bring yourself. And I'm um, really excited to see you guys. Hannah will take us into breakout rooms from here. <laughs> 